right guys i've been waiting for this episode for such a long time and i just got goops goosebumps introducing my next guest who is a life and relationship coach somebody that i look up to that i've been following for years on youtube that kind of gave me my edge to do what i do her name is stephanie lynn stephanie it is a true honor to have oh you goodness. on the podcast. This is a big deal for Excuse me. Excuse me so. while I fix my hair. Oh, it my is. It, for that one. <laughs> it's a big Thank deal. Thank you. Yes. Like, because I think everyone, especially being a coach, like I take bits and pieces from everyone and, and definitely like a lot of the stuff that you talk about from codependency, narcissism, uh, toxic people growing up childhood, all those things like were introduced from just from the beginning of your videos when you first started to now. So mm -hmm. if you could just kind of tell the audience who you are and what you do, just mm -hmm. so they know what greatness is on this podcast today. <laughs> oh, dang. Um, so, hey guys, uh, my name is Stephanie. I'm a life coach. Uh, I actually started my practice five years ago, but I started my journey probably 10 or 12 years ago. Um, I was actually getting married uh, and was getting severe, severe anxiety before my wedding. I'm a child of divorce as well. Mm -hmm. So trying to make sure I find the one and I'm making the right decision. Uh, and I kind of dove into really, it started with understanding anxiety and coping with it. And then it turned into learning about codependency, understanding that I was highly sensitive, never heard that word before, uh, learning that I was an empath, never heard that word before. Um, and it kind of just evolved. Uh, I got married, I had a baby and I quickly got divorced. And then I learned about narcissism and, and really <laughs> dove into codependency. Then we dove into, you know, childhood trauma. And I think one thing just led to the next. And I, I loved uh, coaching and, and the mix of psychology and self-development and spirituality. And over the years, I've just done so much work on myself that and learned a lot along the way. And I really wanted to help people that were coming out of abusive relationships and not just that typical abuse that we learn about when we're kids, the stuff that's a little gray and is a little mm -hmm. sneaky and you don't really know, oh, I'm being manipulated. Oh, this is gaslighting. Like these are all terms that like no one teaches you and you don't learn about growing up, yeah. but they're fundamental things that you need to know in order to have healthy relationships. Right. So, um, my style of coaching is really educational and teaching you about that mm -hmm. stuff, but then really working on your inner self. I teach mm -hmm. all my clients a process called self-parenting, where it is essentially you being the parent to yourself and, and learning how to, you know, show up every day as your healthy adult self versus, yeah. you know, your child, your wounded child self. Yes. And just for all the empaths that are tuning in, I mean, one big thing, especially when I coach people as well, like a lot of this stuff comes from childhood and it's get mm -hmm. stuck in our unconscious. And I know this is something big that you talk about. And then for some reason, we go ahead and start attracting these narcissists that come into our lives where we just kind of like get attracted to them. So Stephanie, I just want to like, just back up from the very beginning for anyone that's listening. Um, how critical would you say are those early years of maybe maybe not having the best parents or being raised by people that uh, weren't probably the best uh, role models in your life? How much does mm -hmm. that um, weigh, especially when you go through life in adulthood into marriage and later on in life? How how big is that uh, that for everyone that's listening. I mean, I, I personally think, well, first of all, obviously it's, it's a huge thing, but I do think that every parent is human themselves. And so when you become an adult and when you start to be not even an adult, when you start to become uh, logical, like say between, you know, 10, nine, 10, 11, that kind of stuff, you start looking at your parents differently. You start looking at them as humans versus like, oh my God, they know everything. I need to listen to them always. You start having opinions. Yeah. You start looking at uncle and realizing, okay, he's not funny. He's actually just <laughs> drunk all the time. You know yeah. what I mean? So you start seeing the humanness and you realize, wow, mom and dad are actually a little not healthy or yeah. they're a little messed up. By then, a lot, obviously a, a lot of the programming is in the back of that mind in the subconscious and it's kind of set. And I think those years where you start becoming aware of like, oh, mom's actually a little toxic and dad's you yeah. know, emotionally, no one's home. Like when you start learning that at those young ages, if you started reprogramming that stuff, then it yeah. wouldn't affect you as an adult. But because 
that programming happened from, you know, zero to eight, zero to seven. Um, and it's so deep rooted. And then you go through your teenage years and your twenties and your thirties or whatever, and you keep reinforcing yeah. that stuff. Then it, you know, it gets even harder to kind of change those, mm-hmm. that, that programming, those habits or that paradigm. Look at me, bro, right. Bob Proctor. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. And one of the big things I know you're on uh, that you talk about is like the wounded child, like, you know, the mm-hmm. wounds that we carry with us into adulthoods. So for example, like, I know like there's a lot of people that are tuning in that are empaths or highly sensitive people that have been through trauma and they carry those wounds. And yes, they, they go to therapists, they go to coaches like you, mm-hmm. How like going to the right person is going to make the biggest difference. Cause I got a, I'll be honest. I got a lot from you that I did mm-hmm. not get from a traditional like medical community mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. I got, you know, some other stuff from some great therapists, but <laughs> a lot of the stuff that you talked about came from experience, came from life experience. How important is that? Um, as far I, as I think, I think at every stage of your like journey, your healing journey, you require different things. So I think the go-to is let me call a therapist. And yes. I think a therapist can be very good for validation, um, for clarity, for insight in terms of what, what happened, what, what's going on, you know, all of that psychology stuff that we don't, you know, if we don't major in it, we don't know these things. Like I heard codependency, I heard narcissism growing up, but didn't really know the extent of what that meant. So having the, the therapist is basically in that moment in the office, the therapist is the adult and you're the mm-hmm. child and you sit there. And you feel everything and you're in that safe space where you feel comfortable to let it out to a complete yeah. stranger. <laughs> so the process of self-parenting is about learning how to be both the child and mm-hmm. sit there and feel emotions and, 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 you know, everything that you're the stress, the worry, the fear, the anxiety, like all of those things and still be able to then swap into that, that therapist coach role. Right. And so being playing those two, having those two sides in the head <laughs> and, and trying to do this for yourself in the beginning, it's, it's overwhelming. So I think therapy is good for what it should be for. Yeah. Um, but I do think that unless you experience this stuff, it's hard to really help someone out of it. So how can you help someone through grieving the loss of a loved one who got killed and a blah, 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 you know, all this stuff. If you don't really know what that feels like, you've never lost a loved one, not, you know, good for you, but you've never experienced that type of trauma. Um, so I think life experience is huge when it comes to, you know, healing. I really do. And I, I'm big on that. Cause, uh, as you guys know, I'm an empath coach and a lot of the stuff that I use in coaching is from getting bits and pieces, not from just other people, but experiences that I've gone through and still going through to this day, because I'm not perfect. And I'm, I'm openly not shy to tell people that, that I'm still working on my uh, traumas. And in fact, uh, I decided, um, I haven't uh, told anybody this, but I, in this episode, I do want to say that I put everything together in a book, which I'm planning on releasing this year. And I just wanted to let everyone know Congrats. that. That's amazing. Yes. Good and for I, you. I wanted to mention that in this episode, just because it, it, a lot of the, the stuff that I talk about is a lot of the things that you talked about way back when, when you were starting out. And, and that's one thing is consistency. Like you were always consistent. You always had something valuable to say when, like, I couldn't really pick up the phone and like you said, go to a therapist and talk to mm-hmm. them about especially cultural stuff. Like, as you know, like I'm from a East Indian background. So like education and playing a certain uh, stereotype, I had, you know, it's just, that's built in our culture. And I just mm-hmm. can't just go to somebody out of the blue and be like, Hey, can, can you understand why I can't have a one-on-one conversation with somebody in my culture about mm-hmm. boundaries? They mm-hmm. don't believe in boundaries. It's a one-way relationship. You talk down and that it's like a top-down type mechanism. So it's like things like that won't transfer over like boundaries and, and all these things that are that we should be setting um, as to be healthy and, and having healthy anger and things like that. So I wanted mm-hmm. to ask you, Stephanie, like, especially with the work that you do, what is your approach? Let's say I like somebody comes to you, they're they've been through uh, trauma, they're codependent, and they use the word adult child. What does that mean? And can you explain that to the audience? So oh, 
every person, no matter what they come to me for, it's funny because years ago I watched um, Tony Robbins say, you know, I talked to so many people around the world and <laughs> everyone and everyone has like the same stuff, no matter what country. Uh, and he was right. I mean, obviously he's talked to so many people, so he, he must know what he's talking about. But it's true that no matter who comes to me with what they're trying to achieve or heal from or deal with, it all comes back to self you know, mm -hmm. like not to sound corny, but it does. And learning how to be in this human experience in this body, you know, and, and learn how to take care of this. Once you know that, then everything else changes. Everything in your life changes, your relationships change, your money changes, your career, where you live. I mean, anything mm -hmm. that you want for yourself starts to change. So we kind of go back and forth between the validation, depending on where the person is, right? Do they need the validation? Do they need the soothing? Do do they need clarity and insight on what it is that they're going through because they don't really understand and they're just trying to put pieces together. So it's that little bit of therapy, that little bit of mm -hmm. coaching, but um, I'm very, very big on goal setting. And the reason why I'm big on it is because the goal helps you to put the practice in play. So mm -hmm. we're, we're practicing, we're talking about all this stuff, but if we don't ever go out and do it and it's then we're challenge work. ourselves, yeah. it's not, it's not going to work. Like nothing's, mm -hmm. you know, it's not going to be consistent. Um, and the good thing is you don't have to set, you know, you don't have to say, I want to make a million dollars. You can just say, mm -hmm. I'm going to leave my house and just go have a nice day. Well, yeah. if that's your goal, guess what? <laughs> You're going to hit a red light. Someone <laughs> might bump into you in Target and be rude. Yeah. You might get a call from your sister who you don't like and is narcissistic. So life is going to just throw you all mm -hmm. of these challenges. And then this is the time where, okay, we're going to start putting what we've learned into yeah. practice. And, and we start with one thing at a time, you know, we're not trying to move mountains. So mm -hmm. especially when we're self-parenting and we're learning how to really take care of ourselves mentally and emotionally, I always start with validation. We got to start first with, you know, validating every experience, every thought, and depending on where the client is, they can move through that very easily. Maybe they're already doing it for themselves. Maybe, they, maybe they struggle with self-soothing. So each person is either going to be really good at being taking care of themselves emotionally, which I call being mom or taking care of themselves mentally, which I call being dad. So mm -hmm. when we typically think of mom, we think of nurturing and validating and soothing and she held you and all of those feminine energies. Mm -hmm. And when we think of dad, we think all logic, no nonsense, get up. We got to do mm -hmm. this. You can do this. You're capable. All of that great motivational stuff. Um, most people can do the mental, but they skip over the emotional Sure. or they stay in the emotional and they don't do the mental. And yeah. so figuring out where that person is um, and then going from there. Gotcha. So just kind of fast forwarding to today, as, as we know, in the landscape after COVID, it seems to be a lot of people that um, just, I think after COVID just staying at home and, and just kind of cutting themselves off that traumatic experience in itself is still lingering. I can feel it mm. when you go out, some people mm -hmm. are traumatized for it. Um, so what kind of, I guess, what can you give to the, anybody that's listening right now that might be trapped at home? Um, I know that the other day I got some, a message from a fan, um, and I just wanted to mention on this podcast has CPTSD is disabled and um, it really touched my heart that he reached out to me and he was just saying that this podcast like changed his life and it totally changed my day that, okay, I have meaning, like I touched somebody, at least it was one person and yeah. I love getting these messages, but what can you tell somebody that might be out there in the same similar situation where, you know, they're, they're just at a point where they can't move forward, they can't move back. And it's just like, there's no hope. What do you do in those senses where, where you're at a, at a stance or a standstill and it doesn't seem like anything's working. What, what can we do as, you know, to me, this sounds like a lot of detaching from that fear, which is essentially either ego or it's that inner child. Right. So like, if you understand spirituality, you understand that there's always a part of you call it your soul, your essence, mm -hmm. your intuition, whatever that is knows all right? It knows that you're capable. It knows that the sphere isn't real. It knows that yeah. I should probably go take a shower now, or I need to eat better, right? It's yeah. always taking care of you. So we tend to listen to, I always say good angel, bad angel, right? So yeah. we, we tend to listen to the bad angel a lot. And when we listen to it and we feed it, it debilitates us. And so a huge part of self-development in my practice is, and it's probably the hardest thing that people struggle with is detaching and like understanding that and, you know, 
sometimes some people need tough love. Some sometimes people need a little uh, yeah. more nurturing and, 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 you know, let's be gentle in this, but you have to practice detaching from the mind. Like you have to understand how the mind works. When I started really learning about my mind, where thoughts come from, how they form, where they stay, just understanding this, this thing in our, you know, our mind. I mean, it literally changed my life. There were a lot of things that changed my life, but you know, learning about, okay, I'm codependent and understanding what that meant. Yeah, it helped, but I'm talking about game changer stuff. And that was huge because then I understood like, wow, I'm actually feeding something that's not real mm -hmm. and it hasn't happened. And, and then, you know, to take it the next step further, you are literally responsible for your happiness. And I, I know with coaching and, and at least for me and self-development, there's a huge spirituality pre, uh, practice in this, whether religion, spirituality, what, it doesn't matter what you want to believe in, but there is a slowing down when you do this work. So you can really just, you know, take a breath for a minute because life goes fast. And I mean, between the news and COVID and <laughs> you know, scary headlines and, oh my God, I'm 40 and I should know what I'm doing. And, you know, all of these things, then it takes away from your ability to just mm -hmm. sit and breathe and just be at peace. So it, like with you, you know, you've learned so much from so many different people. I can go from a Tony Robbins to an Eckhart Tolle to yes, a mm -hmm. Les Brown to a, you know, and so to a Gary, uh, Michael Singer, and just really get in deep into this stuff. Um, where it helps you to feel like you have control, you yeah. know, and not, and that you're not helpless, but mm -hmm. you have to actually just start practicing just yeah. little things. Right. And then you gain momentum right. and life starts getting better and better. You just got to kind of stick with yeah. it. And one thing I want to throw out there is like, I mean, I used to be, I'll be honest. I used to be one of those people. I would just take on information after information right after, you know, I, took in that information, that would be it. I wouldn't do anything with it. There'd mm. be no action. It wasn't mm -hmm. until I said, okay, what are three things that I learned from this that I can start doing every day? Even if it's like 5% every day, every day I would try to go out there and do it. Even if it sucked, I would just do it. And just because you're l listening to all these people and you're reading all these self-help books, unless you actually go out there and practice it and put in action and effort, hold yourself accountable. No one's really going to do it for you, but yourself. And that's, that's how I kind of got to where I am from bedridden to now podcast and books and having awesome mm -hmm. people like you on here. It took a lot of time, you know, so. Can I ask you, was, was that, what do you think, if you know, what was like that one defining moment that said, this, this is going to change now. Like I need to start getting this stuff done. It was, I remember like I was by myself. I was trying to go for a walk. I had some health issues, back issues going on. And I'm, I said, am I going to go out this way or mm -hmm. if, or am or I, are you just going to def be defeated? Cause I had to make a decision at that point. Cause if you're going to give up, then you're going to give up, but you're not a quitter. And so I had to take little bite pieces every day and do something small enough and try to make it bigger every day, just trying to make it uh, amplified a little bit more like a snowball effect to the point where I started, okay, I'm going to get up at like five minutes early, or I'm, I'm going to do work out for, you know, just an extra 20 minutes today. So I kept mm -hmm. doing small things like that, holding myself accountable. And I got to a point where, okay, what can I do next? Okay. I want to do a podcast. Let's do one episode. Okay. Next what? Let's do two, three. Well, I'm at almost 200 now. Okay. Now what? I want to build on that. I want to, you know, get some of the best people on here. And I just kept going and I never looked back. And for mm -hmm. me, it was, I did get a lot of help from people, but at the end of the day, I had to stand up on my own feet and just move forward. And I don't know if you heard of Mel Robbins with the five, four, mm -hmm. three, two, one stuff. Yep. That was yep. huge. That really helped me out a lot. So that's how I kind of got, could say that I got to where I am today. But yep. it, was it easy? No. Did I have to do stuff that I hated? Yes. But it did it pay off? I'm looking back, of course, because I wouldn't be here right in front of you if I didn't have all the trauma and those nights where I just didn't know if I was going to make it, you know, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but that's well, and how I think I you it. you touched on something that I think everyone experiences in order for them to start gaining momentum, mm -hmm. which is uh, you got to hit enough pain. Mm -hmm. Everyone's pain threshold is different. 
So once you hit that pain, that was kind of like your wake up call. But mm -hmm. if you don't hit, if you don't hit that pain, because you don't have to get knocked down by something right, in order to actually do something and be consistent. Yeah. But the other piece is, do you celebrate those little tiny things that you did, yeah. even though you, even though you want to do more than that? Are you okay with saying, you know, for me, I never worked out a day in my life. I never went to the gym because I was codependent. And I wanted someone to come with me. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then when I had my son, I gained 50 pounds and then my ex-husband left me for someone. Um, oh and I'm, gosh. you know, over here pushing, <laughs> oh yeah, um, pushing the carriage and I'm, I'm, you know, 50 pounds overweight. I just had this baby yeah. and oh, I was like, okay, I'm just going to take a walk around the block. And that was it. It was just literally around right. the block and that was it. And so I did that and it okay. sounds so small, but if you suffer from anxiety and if you don't yeah. really have moment momentum yet, and you know, like I can't go from zero to 60, like I don't, I don't even want it quite frankly. Yeah. You have to do those little things and give yourself the yeah. praise so you can want to do more. It's kind mm -hmm. of like, you'll want to work harder for the boss that you really mm -hmm. like that treats you well. And you'll stay, even though you're underpaid. Yeah. <laughs> because they're so awesome to you. So totally. um, it's kind of like that, like learning how to be yeah. the parent, the boss, you know, like just that good cheerleader, you want to keep going. Mm. And that, you know, over time, then you build confidence and that gains momentum. Absolutely. It started with just going down the block. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to do this. And once you get consistent and you mm -hmm. say, no matter what rain or shine, I'm going to walk down the freaking block. I don't care how much my back hurts. I don't know if it's raining outside, I'm going to do it. That mentality is what I tr contribute to this podcast and moving mm -hmm. forward and getting all these people on here. It's that never die attitude. And for mm -hmm. anyone that's listening out there, you guys are never alone. I want to appreciate you guys for coming with me on this journey and, you know, having amazing guests like you. And before we take off, uh, Stephanie, could you just tell us where we can find you and mm -hmm. anything you would like to mention to the audience before we take off? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, oh, how many social media platforms are there again? <laughs> She's got all I'm of them, like, guys. Oh my God, I can't. Um, well, another platform is coming up. Um, so, I mean, you can find me on YouTube. It's Stephanie Lynn Coaching. Um, Lynn is L-I-N. Uh, you can find my podcast, Heal, Heal, Survive, Thrive on you know Spotify and iTunes and everything mm -hmm. like that. Um, the website, stephanielynnlifecoaching.com. Um, and you know, we sell courses and we, <laughs> we, <laughs> I always do the we thing for some reason. Um, so I, yeah, I sell courses. I do online coaching. Uh, I do membership programs, eBooks, er everything for everyone, no matter where you're at. Um, I, I thank you so much for having me on. I think what you do is amazing work and I love the empath stuff and <laughs> I wish I knew it, you know, 10, 12, 13, <laughs> that I was an empath. It would have really helped right. <laughs> a lot. Absolutely. And you're always welcome back. So keep in touch and keep up the amazing work you do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. All right, guys, that does it for this special episode. Stay tuned for the next. Got a lot more guests coming on here and always keep moving forward. Stay tuned for the next episode. And we are out. You're listening to the On Call Impact.